Stocktown, a federal housing estate came into limelight in the year 1977. The period Nigeria hosted the Second World African Festival of Art and Culture tagged Festac 77. <laughs> After the first African festival hosted in Dakar, Senegal in 1966, the Federal House and Estate along Lagos Badagri Expressway was specifically constructed to accommodate foreign participants at the Festival of Culture or Jamboree. This place was being built to house those who are going to participate in Festival Act 77. That is second festival of art and culture. That's the, the meaning of first act. Most of the houses, most, most especially the flats, were occupied by people who come from for first act 77. And after they have gone, there was balloting for us, those who now occupy the place. The intention was not to give to, to those who are not in government. But thanks to uh, Alison Ayida, he's a super palm sec under Gowan uh, government. He said it generally everybody that are in Lagos who need houses, so many that are crying for uh, houses, to be allowed to participate in the balloting. That is why those of us who are not in, in, civil, in federal civil service were lucky to be here. Festac, the acronyms of the Festival of Art and Culture, remains the name of the town 42 years down the line. This community situated in Amuwa, Dauphin local government area of Lagos State now accommodates people of diverse cultures, beliefs and businesses. With its varying unit segmentation, allocation of units was done according to individuals' request and financial capacity. One of the residents of this notable town is our community champion for today. Pa Jolao Gunlusi, a member of the first community development association in Festac Town formed in the year 1982, named after the festival, Festac 77 Community Development Association. We visited the man who struggled for a better community contributed immensely to the growth and development of Festac Town precisely on January 17, 2019 two days after the town clocked 42 years. My name is Jola Emmanuel Ogulusi. I was born 1934 in Ilaro Esun, Ayedu Ekiti, in a Ikole Lota government of Ekiti State. I attended St. Luke's School for part of my primary. Later, I went to St. Paul's School, Ikole, where I uh, attended for time four. Finished my primary school in 1953 in Methodist School, Then I left to teach 1955 to 1958. 59, I returned to secondary school and Sarodin High School. I was there for four years plus. I joined the press in 1963. I work on the Nigerian Tribune, Irokin Yoruba. I left New Nigerian Newspaper in 1978 to work with the NUJ. And I served the NUJ for 13 years as the first executive full-time secretary of the NUJ. I retired there. Responsibility comes from knowing the need to take action and not just a need to urge others to do something. Pao Gunlusi. A veteran journalist come trade unionist brought the spirit of comradeship to bear, and with power of the pen which is mightier than this world at his beckon, he fought vigorously to reclaim the lead to London status of his community. When we moved here, we described this place as a little London, because it was very beautiful. Everything works. When you are driving in the night, you don't need to put on your headlines, because the street lights are working, our lights are underground, the electricity is underground. They have telephone connection to the houses. Our streets are swept by supers. Very neat. But later, when people started moving in and moving in, first act became almost a slum. As a journalist, I've gone to Europe, both East and West, and I see 
towns like this, the beauty and everything there. So I feel very disturbed to see that uh, how could we have a beautiful town like this and suddenly turn it to dunk. I led a delegation to Abuja. They asked me, what do you want us, them to do to reverse the first act back to what it was? And I said, first, let's remove containers. In fact, I have not counted the number of containers, but it is everywhere. In 1964, we removed 2,861 containers in First Act and uh, Swiss Avenue, up to Abulado. That is my ambition, to ensure that I maintain the little London I met when I came here. Before we came to First Act, I used to hear that name, Jola Ogulusi, as the Secretary General of NUJ. That was how I knew them, Secretary of NUJ, from, the, from distance. So it was actually a privilege when I came in and I met him as my neighbor, trying to build up a modern first act with all these problems anyway, challenges and co. He has gone through a lot of challenges, a lot of litigations, being uh, accused, thrown in here, here and there, but like that uh, 206 road, it was a battle. He took him to, he was detained, he was embarrassed, he was messed up and cool, but he stood his ground. He actually used those qualities to fight for first tag in particular, and then the community in general. It is important to note that no man ever was wise by chance. The former Nigeria Union of Journalists General Secretary went through heartbreaking pains for the gains of others. In fact, one of the serious cases there's a place they call 206 Park. I have to name it Victory Park because that took me into detention. I was arrested with six orders and detained, charged to court. But thank to God, by the time we petitioned to Abuja, to the presidency and to the minister, they revoked the allocation of that place. And that is why, at the end of the day, I call it Victory Park. It's being used, it's the only park that is left very open and decently maintained in First Act. Through a tint of hard work and selfless service in the course of humanity, Paul Gunlusi activism attracted accolades best described as coat of many colors. This one, you see the pen was given it by a group of women in Abuja. It's an appreciation of my role as uh, the Secretary of NUJ. The outstanding rewards the champion is blessed with are compassionate souls who believe, support, and show adequate understanding with the path he has chosen. I thank God I have an understanding wife. Because for everything a man does, the background at home is very important. It's a pity that it's late. He would have spoken to you, he probably would have told you her experience. My dad, Jalal Gunasi, is a very nice person. He's a good husband. He was my mom uh, of blessed memory. And in no time has his community work interfered with his family activities in no time, because even towards the end part of my mom's um, life here on earth, she, he had to always go with her to the hospital and everything. And he had not for one day said, because he had one community thing to do, abandon her to go and attend to the community. And whenever he comes back from, from the hospital with her, if he needs to attend to community issues, he's still even as tired as he might be, he still attends to the community people too. My father is someone that I definitely want to take after. He's a selfless person. The septuagenarian explicates his foresight for a lasting solution to the traffic gridlock on the Apapa Oshodi Expressway, an alternative route to his place of Abbott. Where they have a school in my tour, all the school, complex of schools, transfer those schools into the building, into the inside something, and acquire that place and make it a parking field. Prepare very well and ensure 
that all these trailers are parked there. And then maintain that unless you are called to come to load, you don't go there. Because once they maintain that piece and they skewer it around and they give them number and there is going to be a communication system with that place to our papa or to the wolf, nobody will be parking on the road. Until that is done, they cannot succeed in removing them. Anybody who refuses to go there, they should see the vehicle. You find the vehicle. No individual should be too bigger than the government. 